So we have five, so we can get started. Um, seven o'clock on November 16th. Welcome to our special board meeting. Uh, please stand for the pledge. Um, so, Anne-Marie, do you do the roll call even though we haven't appointed you yet? I can. Okay. Never mind. No, no problem. I'm just trying to um, admit people as they're jumping on. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Zhang? Present. Mr. Wolf? Here. Mr. White? Here. Ms. Stadler? Here. Ms. Batterbid? Here. Ms. Ewer? Here. Mr. Galloway? Delayed. Ms. Johnson? Uh, is she on? Del delayed. Do we lose Anne Marie? Yeah. I don't know if she's frozen or. I don't yeah, see her. I don't see her on my screen. Um, no. She so may be I'll, trying to let people in. I'll, I can finish with a roll call. Who? Um, Craig? I'm here. And Kristen must be delayed. Is that everyone? Alyssa, did, did, did we call your name? You're here. Yes, and I said here, but it, I logged on like literally the moment she said my name, so. Okay, okay. so let's move on. Um, Matt, you do not need to review the fire exits. Um, can I have a motion to appoint Anne-Marie Cordoni as clerk pro tem? Motion. Second. Second by Alyssa. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so passes three, five, six to zero. Sorry, I'm just getting a pen. I can't find my pen. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Um, can I have a motion to waive agenda items 2.02 to 2.08? Moved. Anthony. Second. Laura, comments and questions about this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes six to zero. Okay, so moving on to our workshop. Um, hopefully, um, Jasmine and John will show up because this a big part of this is for them to get really um, deeply acquainted with our board goals. But um, the idea here is we need to review our board goals once a year. Um, and I wanted to have Matt just talk about what we're doing for each board goal, how that's really applying in a very active way in our district that they're not just aspirational, but there's something behind each goal. Um, and we can discuss if we want to change um, any of the goals. So should we start with our excellence goal? Um, I'll, I'll read it, which is the BCSD will provide an exemplary curriculum and supportive culture to ensure all students max maximize their potential and are prepared for, the, for any endeavor beyond graduation. Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about our excellence goal? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm just uh, getting a text from John about getting on. Oh, he said it was invalid. I forwarded him the one from um, that you sent to the community, which is how I got on. So. 
Uh, sorry, I just got distracted there. Um, the excellence goal, uh, just uh, in a sense, is sort of an overarching goal, and we have primarily in the past focused on things like uh, course offerings, um, class sizes, uh, you know, new new programs, uh, professional development to support those things. Um, uh, you know, when I gave the board update a few weeks ago, I, I honestly, with excellence, uh, focused uh, my conversation just on our reopening plan, um, just just uh, just because it's been such a massive lift for us, and it just kind of gets us uh, was getting students uh, in the building. So, uh, so yeah, so it, the excellence goal. Uh, is really focused on uh, what we offer academically, uh, the depth and breadth of what we offer, uh, the classroom experience, um, you know, and then everything that supports that uh, from sort of structural things like class size to uh, support things like professional development. Are you talking, Meredith? Sorry about that. Um, so I figured we would just go through each one and stop, you know, any board member can comment or have questions about it. Um, so does anyone have any? Hi, Jasmine. John, John's on also now and Kristen. So everyone is here, which is great. Um, does anyone have any specific comments or questions about the excellence goal? I do. Uh, how does, what is our dropout rate looking like lately? And what do we do for the people that are on the verge of dropping out? I'd like to hear some discussion about that. Is this discussion tonight or discussion in a future meeting? Um, it, you know, because I'd be either. I mean, I, I just think that when we talk about preparing students for what comes next, for some of them, it's like none of the above. So uh, I think they should be included too in our planning. And uh, now obviously not a big discussion for tonight, but just a thought to add to the list. Right. Um, our, I'll, I'll say graduation rate, our graduation rate uh, has been increasing for the past few years. We still have room for improvement with it, uh, with all membership groups and uh, especially students of color. Um, Although we've seen some nice uh, gains with that in the last uh, couple of years. Um, what are we doing? We're doing things like uh, <clears throat> credit recovery, summer school at the high school level, uh, both credit recovery slash and summer school. Um, you know, it, it's really more of a systemic thing. So, uh, so it's also looking at the whole, the whole program um, pre K to 12. And you know what are we doing to uh, to make sure students are reading on grade level? Um, what are we doing to uh, keep students in the classroom? Uh, and and by that I mean that they're not um, you know seeing as many <laughs> disciplinary consequences. So um, you know, so it's it's things that we've been talking about for the last couple of years. So on the you know the code of conduct side, uh, we've been trying to you know do the levels of infractions that Eric has been talking about for the last year and a half, and doing restorative practices and things like that. Uh, last year, uh, up to the pandemic time uh, when we went remote, we saw a pretty drastic reduction in the amount of time students were out of school. Uh, for a out of school suspension, um, and and you know, and so that I think is a is a big part of it, and then you know, doing things uh, to improve uh, both our assessment, um, the way we assess students, and uh, and reading instruction, which is something that we can talk more in depth than at a future meeting. Another metric we had for. Um for watching the excellence goal was curriculum implementation. And um, 
Matt Gray gave a great presentation at the diversity meeting the other night, and I'm sure he'll get into that a little bit more during when we talk about the equity goal. Are there any other comments or questions about the excellence goal? I think that um, one thing I was thinking about is that we don't, we focus, can you hear me? Am I muted or? No, we can hear you. We focus so much on, I mean, I understand these key metrics. I feel like we're not in the grant, in the um, excellence goal. under support, uh, you know, an exemplary curriculum and supportive culture, I think we're not establishing a goal for ourselves as a community in terms of staff, teachers, administrators, and any way of measuring anyone who goes above and beyond in the areas of, you know, bringing new opportunities for students or recognizing that, um, you know, that, that kind of, culture that we want to create. Um, I, I don't know, there, I don't know what the metric would be necessarily, but it's something that, you know, I've just been thinking about the, um, you know, we've had teachers and we bring us opportunities for summer learning or, uh, you know, individual teachers write for grants. And I just feel like we, I think putting the excellence, um, goal on ourselves as adults in a community would also be something important to think about. Like ways, ways to, uh, like ways to foster innovation. Not everything has to be, uh, you know, letting good ideas sort of come from individuals and then try to um, grow it out. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about this for, um, you know, when I, when I, they're the theme, whatever the motto of the school I went to was Pursuit of Excellence, and they had a Pursuit of Excellence award, and it was given to a student every, I don't know if it was every month or every quarter, but then it was also, there's an Excellence Award for a staff member. And it was just this way of kind of calling out anybody that, um, I, I think the, the idea of like uh, anybody that did do that, where they went above and beyond, where they looked for something new or innovative or just stretched. And I think that um, example is a huge part of, um, you know, the role that we all play in children's lives you know, that they'll do what we do more than <laughs> they'll do what we say. And it, anytime you see a, you know, teacher or an administrator or a staff member doing something uh, beyond just the minimum and bringing more enrichment, more opportunity, more insight, anything to students. I, I, I think there's, I don't know if there's a metric for it though, but um, it's just something I'd like to think about because I, I, otherwise I don't know, it's not really incentivized. No, I mean, it, it, it can just be something that we try to focus on, um, just celebrating and recognizing, uh, people who go above and beyond. And that, that is a one lever to shift to culture. It's not the only one, but it's, it can definitely be a powerful one. Yeah, I think in just more of a systemic way is what I'm thinking, because we, we do have these things where teachers get recognized. I, I feel like we've, we have things in a very hodgepodge way that appear on the agenda, but that doesn't fit into any kind of cohesive um, systemic way of, of making that a part of the culture. We did have that in the um, superintendent's blog, um, I guess, basically up until COVID. I think it's, um, we haven't done it since then, but maybe it can also be. Our students, our employees. Um, but I think, Kristen, you're going, you use the word systemic and cohesive. So something that's a little more um, clear. Yes. Maybe. 
because if we have these metrics, it doesn't, I know it wouldn't fit into a metric because that's within, you know, how we, how, you know, teachers are reviewed and how, how these evaluations take place is very formalized. But I also think on the other side of it, we, there's nothing that really, it's a cultural thing to formalize it outside of a contract that we're encouraging and recognizing people who go above and beyond and create an example for students. Um, so, um, Kristen, I mean, is, is one example, I guess, I mean, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I mean, I, we, I mean, we have ratings that we, that we do for evaluations and the highest ratings, I, I can't remember if it's outstanding or something like that. Um, are you saying we use something similar to that for, to measure the metric on the, as a metric for this or? I don't think it could be a metric like that. And I, I actually, I think we all can own the limitations of that system. You know, there, there are pros to it for sure because we need to have something, but it also is governed at least in part by the rubric from the state. And so it's, it's not something that's specific to Beacon. And I think that if we, um, I guess what I would say is, I don't think it's for us to solve. <laughs> I just realized I'm still at my daughter's name. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's for us to solve how to, like, we can't come up with a process for which to do it, but it's something that I feel like, I think it would be great if Matt, you put it to the administrators to think of some way to make this more, because each school seems to do it differently. And there seems to be this, there's, I think part of it is the regularly recognizing it, regularly communicating it, um, and and making it more uh, systematic, that it's something that we're looking for and recognizing. And we do it with kids with positive behavior and we do it with kids with academic excellence or sporting excellence or things like that. I just think there's an opportunity to um, I would like to recognize teachers that, that, that um, are getting grants for the, to, to expand their uh, curriculum in the school. Um, I think that that is one one good point there. But I also don't I also don't pretend to know the answer to how to capture it. Um, how to ca how to measure and capture excellence. Well, I think it's just good to you know try to broaden the goal a little bit, and and it's not necessarily something we need to figure out tonight. But I think it's it is important to think about. Um, the idea in the broadest way and that it's not, you know, obviously all of this trickles down to students. Um, so it is important in that way. But, and I, I think it's true that, you know, some things are, I don't, yeah, some, some things don't fall under metrics necessarily. And culture is a hard, is one of those. I think that's hard in a lot of ways um, to fit in those boxes. And it doesn't mean we shouldn't try or, you know, but that can be tricky. I, I mean, I'm even thinking something like, you know, recognizing things that we've established as, you know, or that Matt has established as, as things that he wants to see advanced. And anybody who's taken an innovative approach or an interesting approach or really taken ownership of the culturally responsive classroom work or anybody who's really um, taken curriculum uh, and adapted it in a very meaningful and innovative way to students. Anything like that where just, it's more that we're on the lookout for initiative. Yeah, I mean, we have teachers that are taking the lead on PD. With, I mean, I, that may count as well, right? That's what I'm, I'm saying that I think that it's worth looking at the different aspects of things that we are trying to uh, advance and and turning it more the, and bringing this goal to the adults as well as how we're measuring the kids, you know. I think it's a really good point. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to add about the excellence goal or about the, you know, if, if you have 
issues with the wording. I, I don't see us changing these goals um, particularly. I feel like we've we've gone over them a lot and most of it is really, I think how we're, um, how we're applying them, but. I mean, I, I think I'd like to maybe perhaps capture more metrics. I mean, I think the grant and teachers that take lead in PD, I think that would be a good metric, two good metrics right there to add to that. Um, you know, we, we need the metrics to only evaluate ourselves against the goals, but also to celebrate our successes. And that's um, you know, channeling Makrotowski there. I think what's missing from this formula is uh, more attention to specific objectives. Goals are very broad. Metrics are what? You can't really measure goals with metrics unless you have specific objectives such as we'd like to improve our dropout rate for the third year in a row by 1.2 points, whatever seems to be reasonable and a good reachable target that would inspire us to do more. So I think we should be putting more attention on that middle category of specific objectives. What is it that we want to achieve? The, uh, the language we've been using is uh, the you know, the board goals um, are like the key pillars of our strategic planning work, but then we have major actions and actions. Um, <clears throat> like, uh, you know, I, I think the way we've been thinking about it is that uh, at future board meetings over the next few months, we take one of the board goals and we, uh, we break down uh, how we're working on it with major actions and actions. Um, I can do brushstrokes on some of that stuff tonight. I did that at the October 26 board meeting. Um, and I can sort of repeat that uh, tonight, but like to really drill down on any one of these goals, I think probably is, is more of a, uh, a board meeting specifically. Workshop, uh, um, uh, like, you know, for instance, at the, at the diversity committee the other night, you know, we spent, we spent close to an hour just sort of breaking down some of the major actions and actions under the uh, equity goal for the district. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I agree with you. I think tonight, Meredith, I'm not trying to say what the purpose is, uh, but tonight's just kind of getting a sense of what the goals are and. Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think we talked about having, um, you know, workshops moving forward, um, where we did go deeper into each goal. We've done that in the past. I think that's been really important. So it is really we want to familiarize ourselves with the goals um, and make sure that everyone is on the same page with them. That you know, that's really my goal here. Does everyone feel okay about that? Yeah. I think it's always hard because this is, it actually is a really high level discussion and it's very hard not to get into the woods about it, <laughs> but, or the weeds, the weeds. Um, I think like that, that's what, when I read through them before the meeting and I just, that was one of the things where I was, that popped out at me and I don't have it workshopped perfectly, but I was thinking this might be something to add, you know, for excellence, but I don't think that we can, I use those examples but I don't think it's something that we can really decide on tonight or should decide on. It's just something yeah. that I think would be important to add, but yeah, for goals, I think we need to stay high level. No, um, and I, I, I want to be clear. I'm really happy to hear people's ideas. I'm taking as many notes as I can. It's going to help us shape what we do. Uh, and I, that's what I want to, I want to hear, I want to hear the board's ideas for the goals. I'm just not prepared I'm not prepared to do like a full presentation on each of the goals in terms of every step we're taking for each one. Um, you know, I've done the overview. We, we, we basically did it for the equity goal the other night at the diversity committee, and we were gonna do that at a future board meeting. And then I spoke with Meredith and Alyssa about then sort of mapping out at, you know, five or six future board meetings, we take each, each of the board goals and we kind of drill down and focus on each one.
but to help us get ready for that, I, I would love to hear ideas for each of these, like things that you want us thinking about, uh, things that you want us, you know, um, right? That's part of tonight. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for our part, also, we should be thinking about, you know, is this something that we can improve upon in our policy work? Or, you know, is it, what what is the board's role in this? How does this work? Um, but I think we have really expanded on these goals over the past few years in a good way. And it, it feels like there is strong work um, behind each goal. And so, you know, without, yeah, I mean, you, you talked about that equity goal for literally an hour um, and we're, I wasn't planning for you to speak an hour on each goal tonight. It was not going to be <laughs> seven hour. We, we don't want to do a six hour meeting tonight. <laughs> uh, no, I, yes, I, I love uh, hearing people's thoughts though. It, you know, we, uh, um, the diversity committee back when we met in October and when they met in the summer uh, helped shape kind of what was went into that work um and that obviously this isn't the only chance for this but um i love to hear what people are thinking about these things yeah. and i feel like for the excellence goal um i mean the strategic plan that we that we went through um applies to every goal but it, the the excellence goal really in terms of um you know i, I think about that ideal graduate that we imagined during that um that planning period. And that is someone, you know, who that is excellence. It's someone who can, who's ready to go in whatever direction they, they need or want to go in. Um, and so that really does go in a lot of different directions um, in, a, in, a, in a very positive way, I think. Um, but yeah, we could talk about that for, you know, till midnight. And I, I think, it's more just, are we, do we all have a, you know, common understanding of it um, at, in these broader strokes um, and feel comfortable with it? I think Kristen and Anthony said it nicely, like, you know, we're, we're always, any organization and we're talking about ours, we need to, <clears throat> we need to, um, find every opportunity to create more opportunities for excellence, right? And with, with students and staff, and when you're creating those opportunities for excellence, you also need to find ways to celebrate and recognize them. Um, you need to find ways to support people on that journey. And, and, and also defining, there's, there's a lot of different paths to excellence as well. It's not just uh, the typical thing. Sometimes when people think of school, uh, that it's just like one, two or three things that you can be excellent in. And, and then, um, so I, I, I think what was shared in that first part is really helpful. And um, it's all about culture and it's appreciated. I mean, I, I need to say just also, cause we, uh, <laughs> we were shaping up a lot of uh, actions uh major actions and actions for a strategic plan dashboard last spring and uh and then we sort of went into COVID 19 world and so we just and we've been sort of reformulating a lot of that work and we're trying to get that ready to launch uh in the next month or so and uh so anyway we we got you know some of this work up not pushed back but with everything that went into closing and then reopening, um, some of it, some of it has, uh, um, you know, not gotten the full attention. So, um, so expanding it to the adults, I mean, we, we, we um, without saying that we have um, teachers, we have TAs, so we have instructional staff, non-instructional staff. Um, it's definitely room for a lot um, there. The, the way that it worked, the award that was at my school growing up was you were nominated for it. So a teacher can nominate a student, a teacher can nominate another teacher. You could, it just created this kind of internal culture of recognizing one another. And um, you know, I think they were pretty cognizant of not letting somebody get it too many times. 
Um, but just was, listening to the board meeting. It was uh, something yeah. that was in the front of the buildings you walked into, whoever was. But you didn't write this. Card. Alana, can Alana, you, Alana, you need to mute. Your... <laughs> can you mute your microphone, please? <laughs> Alana, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can move your microphone, that'd be great. Oh, sorry. That's good. Yeah, it's not my mic. No problem. Um, sorry, go ahead. Uh, that, well, I just think that there, it might even be as simple as something like that. Just, um, you know, creating a, a, a mechanism that's a pretty low lift, but, um, but done consistently. Well, I love the idea of something that's not top down, but that is, you know, from from the community that people are recognizing each other. And it kind of it actually feels very similar to the circle work that they've done at the elementary school where you're really seeing each other and looking for each other's um, gifts. So it, in, in that sense, I mean, the, the middle school does this great shout out program um, that's based on nothing really. It's just based on, you know, kindness and, um, people get shouted out just not for anything, you know, not for a particular achievement, but, but just as an act of kindness. And, um, and it's really, it's sweet. It definitely falls in our, under our culture of care goal in a gigantic way in my mind, but um, could be expanded. So does everyone feel okay about the excellence goal? I'm thinking of moving on. Um, so the next goal is the equity goal. I'm just going to read it for those who don't have it in front of them. Um, the BCSD will celebrate diversity and provide an equitable ec education for all students by working to eliminate race, ethnicity, class, gender identity, sexuality, and disability as predictors of student success. Um, and like I said, we, we had this diversity meeting the other night. Matt went into a lot of detail of the various um, projects around that. Uh, I don't know, Matt, if you feel like you can give a five yeah. minute. Um, sure, we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of tie another board goal into this a little bit. So maybe that's the next one we do. Uh, <clears throat> but we kind of focus on three main things uh, in terms of major actions and actions. And uh, one is curriculum, another mm -hmm. is professional development. And then a third is uh, fostering a culture of care. You know, I think these two, the equity goal and the culture of care goal are really uh, strongly linked. Uh, so for the curriculum part, uh, what we talked about at the committee was really digging in uh, as a district to uh, the culturally relevant sustaining framework that the New York State Ed, uh, that New York State Ed put out uh, as sort of a framework and a guide uh, for districts uh, to develop culturally relevant curriculum. So, <clears throat> so we, you know, I think at a future board meeting, we could roll up our sleeves and dig a little bit more into that, but that's, uh, you know, some of our teachers working with this consultant, uh, Dr. Hunter on, uh, on developing uh, projects or units with this focus. It's also looking at the learning materials we use uh, and kind of rating them on a, on a rubric, a cultural relevance rubric uh, for our diverse population. It's, uh, it's also when we during the curriculum mapping uh, K to 12 that we're really having both our content coordinators and our teachers uh, looking for every opportunity uh, to integrate cultural uh, relevance um, into what we're doing. So it's a multi-year effort. Uh, but we, you know, we have each of those things. We got into detail at that meeting about sort of when we want to try to deliver these things. Uh, it's a multi-year effort, but uh, it's all kind of, or some of it's lifting off now, some will be lifting off in the coming month. Um, another part of it is the culture of care. Uh, and I know that's a separate board goal, um, but <clears throat> that that is really the focus on uh, things like the revision to the code of conduct that we the revision to the code of conduct that we did uh, a couple of years ago uh, to uh, implementation of restorative practices uh, and implementation of responsive classroom 
um, you know, helping, uh, helping students and staff build community and uh, talk with each other, um, all of those things uh, with the goal of, uh, you know, of, of our students being in class more, being more connected, uh, being more engaged. And then the last thing we talked about uh, was prof having robust professional development. Um, and with that, uh, we talked about things that either we have been doing or want to do. Um, so we, you know, restorative practices and responsive classroom are things that we have been uh, working on for the last uh, few years. Responsive classroom is actually an effort that we've partnered with a few other districts in Dutchess County to do. Uh, done it through BOCES to bring down costs. Um, the Dignity Framework, which is something how our equity leadership teams um, focus on. Um, and we're, it was a six day training last year. This year we're uh, planning on just doing like a day or two training, uh, both with the time issues that we're facing this year and also, uh, also just resource issues that we're facing this year too. And then finally, uh, not finally, but uh, we're also looking into doing um, or committing to doing uh, some sort of anti-racism work. Uh, we, we're we looking at, um, we're not, we haven't committed to it yet, but we're looking at uh, possibly doing uh, Undoing Racism, which is a three-day workshop. Uh, what we'd like to do for that is include uh, a different stakeholders in the training. Uh, both employees, um, leaders in the district, and uh, and also some community members. Uh, the district, uh, the Nyack School District in uh, Rockland, has been doing uh, the that training for about eight years now, and uh, so I spoke with that superintendent for a long time just about the impact it had on the district. Uh, with that, we're also trying. I mean, I don't know if I'll be successful with this, but we're trying to partner with some other districts in Dutchess County. Um, to do that work um, to again bring down costs. Um, you'll notice the theme tonight uh, that that you know cost uh, of anything is is a concern as we head into the uh, probably next few difficult budget years is what it's looking to be. But we're really committed to uh, to finding ways to do all of this. Uh, the the last part of it uh, that I I forgot to mention was also. Uh, making sure um, or attempting to do culturally relevant family engagement at our schools. And so uh, we're asking our um, equity leadership teams at each school when they're looking at or designing family engagement practices that they're trying to find ways uh, to make it culturally relevant um, in connecting to all elements of their school community. So that was just, you know, the hour presentation in five minutes, uh, but we um, we have a lot planned with this one. We're excited. Uh, we're excited to use the state framework. We're excited to partner with some other districts. I think that sort of lends a certain power to it. Also helps bring down costs. Um, and uh, we're excited to move the work forward even more with this goal. Go ahead, Anthony. One of the, uh, it's not really for the goal, but I guess for a key metric too. I mean, we, now we're, we're getting actually, um, Alyssa for promoting that um, uh, bridges, um, bridging the equity divide to board policy uh, seminar. Um, yep. And I thought it was very informative and and that's actually something we can um, put down as a metric, um, adopting uh, um, understanding and adopting policy uh, 0105. Um, there's also, um, there was a uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, six other policies that has provided some, some edits uh, as updates um, to promote equity across those policies as well. Um, so, um, Definitely added as a key metric there as well. Yeah, I was also uh, watch that. Thanks, Alyssa, for mentioning it. And um, I agree that would be a great. I mean, I felt like a lot of things they were talking about we 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 have in place in our district. We're, we, it's work that we're working on, but it's great to the idea of um, you know putting it together in one place and kind of 
making it a little bit more formal um, through policy. Uh, and then there's a regulation that they had um, as an attachment to that. That was also pretty interesting that I think we should try to talk about at the policy committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. There were a lot of what they talked about. They talked, we're already doing, but it was nice to see them put language around those things. Um, they even went over their the the goals, board policy goals in relation to that policy that Anthony just mentioned. And I took screenshots of them. And there are six six goals that they mentioned that we don't explicitly describe in our in our equity goal, but um, it is interesting to see the language around these six points. And if anyone's interested who was not on that webinar today, I can forward these screenshots um, to the board members who want them via text. And um, actually Matt, the um, Oliver Robinson was one of the speakers today. That's the superintendent in NIAC, right? Um, no, no, he's... Uh... He's in Shenandoah. I can't say oh, it. He said Nyack. Okay. No. Um, uh, anyway, he he had this really great line about um, the leadership governance gap, and I thought it was very interesting in terms of thinking about the board, the relationship between the board and the um, and leadership, and how we how do we merge that work a little bit more? Um, and I think that these goals are. Are a perfect way to do it. So um, it was great to hear that. Are there any other comments about the equity goal? I mean, in some ways, I think that uh, I don't, I, I think that, you know, we're, we're prioritizing things that we've identified and have been able to measure. Um, I know we deal with sexuality in policy, sexual orientation and sexuality in policy. Um, disability is governed in certain ways by um, requirements, uh, but I think that's also something where we need to take a, a little bit look, a, a little bit of a closer look about our practice around that and have. Um, a little bit more discussion there. And then I, I don't know how we have been addressing any of this through gender identity. And these, I mean, these are, this is, this is a massive topic, like in one goal. And so I don't think it's even possible to be doing uh, the same level of work simultaneously uh, all the time. And I, I think that we have some really important frameworks in place that we need to um, finish in terms of professional development and the things we're already doing, especially because um, we have some really strong data around um, our population as it relates to um, race. And so that work should continue. I just, we have these other things in there. And so it's, the language is in our goal. And so I think that it's probably something that I'm not saying we should change the goal at all, but that we should start thinking about how we talk about these things too. And I think that um, I, I agree with you. And I, I think that one of the um, things that I really took away from the diversity meeting is that some of this work is, um, I think it, you immediately think of race in the work, but I, I think that there's impact in all of those areas through this work because one, one of the things was a curriculum audit looking at you know looking at what we're showing what teachers are showing students in order to teach them and um, and that using a, a rubric not that we're making up but from NYU and I assume that that will be um, you know filtering not just for racism but also for any other bias um, and the other thing that comes to mind is um, the student bill of rights which would not just be about you know one kind of um, impact, but but all kinds of impact, and you know really empowering students to be the individuals that they are, and to know you know their their rights 
as they walk through this world. So um, I do feel like some of it is, you know, all of those things are named, and I think all of those things are impacted by some of this work. Some of it is very specific, obviously, but um, but not all of it. Yeah, I, I think also I'm just Anthony. What would you say about in terms of disability and that you know piece of like how we're how we're incorporating that? Because I'm just comparing it to like a as a P, for you as like a PPS professional. Is that one getting this the student inclusive right and making sure that they're inclusive in the school so when the school's doing a family uh, or a school event right they're not just an add-on but it's making sure that they're inclusive not just by bringing up six kids and putting two in each of the gen ed classes because that's still not inclusive right but making sure that all the kids get mixed up so they're all making familiar familiarity <laughs> Well, that was like a echo there. Um, <laughs> did you familiarity? Familiarity could just kept on going. <laughs> um, but I, I think the work is ongoing. It's never going to be perfect. But I think that the goals. I, I'm I'm happy with the goals as they're written. Uh, I'm talking in general for all six. That's I'm kind of being quiet. I think the work that uh, from the strategic plan that we did a couple years ago, and the goals align, and that work is multi uh, years, and and it takes a. Uh, it's an ongoing where we're going to build on it and try and make a make it better and better each year. So I think that uh, changing goals uh, drastically would uh, hurt that work of the strategic plan that had many constituents buy-in. Um, so I think that the goals are fine as written. I'm comfortable with the work that the admin is doing. I think that you know the board involvement. I know that the district has already started auditing their curriculum based on Dr. Javon Hunter coming in looking at what's going on with the um, social studies curriculum. And I know that he's even looking at the English or he might start looking at the English curriculum later um, to see how we can make it um, culturally relevant pedagogy and make sure that we're doing that. Um, so that work is starting. And I know that um, Eric Wright has been in touch with him and they've been communicating so. Yeah, I guess the theme that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of seeing emerge is we do have, we have these goals. I'm not saying that we should change Sorry, I got disconnected. We all did. We oh. all did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so to we're back. Uh, yeah, More Chris, I think you were talking. Go back to do in person meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I know, in person meetings, pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I was just, I think that we're just looking at this like, um, thing where we we have now we've done the we've done all the first part I think it's just a continuing of the theme of we put in the the framework we put in the we've we've created these goals we've started to find frameworks we have the strategic plan now we have actions and then I think that there's some things where not so much that we need to change any of this but that I, I just see some things not um not um, not having the same level of like scaffolding around them. You know, like I think for me, I think, um, you know, students with disabilities, I, I just feel like it's always treated as a separate group. Um, there's a lot of, not, not necessarily intentionally, it's just that it's, I think that it's uh, there is even a whole separate department, and so how we integrate and uh, set up for success, and there's legal requirements around it, and then I think that there are again, this comes down to culture, and that you know we're rewriting curriculum, we're being um, more culture culturally responsive broadly, but I think that that's something that's worth taking a look at, especially since it's in our um, goal, like what is our practice around that and how much are we kind of interrogating our, like how much are we interrogating ourselves about if this is, if we're doing it as much as much of a service to the same subgroup. I, 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 think, I think Kristen that you're correct and I, I would just say that it's awareness because a lot of times it 
like something bad comes out of something that they're trying to be good. Like if you're trying to include kids and, and integrate them into the gen ed population, right? It's easy to say, hey, these two kids go with this group, these two go with this group, but that's not really inclusive, right? So because then they're trying to fit into the group that's already established. So it's just taking that little extra step and think about it from, hey, how would I feel if I was put into a group with just another kid and, and stuff like that? I think it's not out of malicious or not out of intent, something that needs to be a, an awareness of. Is it, is, it, is it something that we're talking about where it's not necessarily about changing the, the goal, but more expanding the metrics? I mean, to I don't even, I think it's like just when we talk about like the, I, cause I don't even know what our metric is on that particular. Well, that's group. the thing I, I was noticing, like for that, the idea of celebrating diversity, like there really isn't a metric right around that. So it feels like maybe that's where the, that's where the accountability comes in. Right. So we have to define what that is. Yeah. And, um, and then I think maybe there's maybe a metric is a student feedback piece. Yeah. You know, where we gain some sort of insight to the student's experience and what they say they're, you know, whether they feel included or seen or uh, have access to answers that they need. I just, I see this through like a, um, you know, like having having a child with a learning disability, that's, it's not like a, it's not something that's the, um, it's, it's, there's a, there's a significant burden placed on the student and placed on the um, family to advocate all the time. And so I don't know if that falls under culture of care or falls under equity. I, I just think that that's, they're in this, we've included this group and uh, and so I think that we need to capture that experience in some way. And maybe it's for all of these. Maybe it is just a key metric will be a student feedback piece where we, where we get um, insight from the students, whether they're surveyed or however we, um, however we determine. But, and I think gender is just another tricky one because I don't think that there's, um, I mean, we certainly could put the same metrics around that, but there's certain things like, I know we had a parent come to a meeting about making sanitary products free in the bathrooms and, you know, taking and, and having that be something that's like, you remove sort of like shame and uh, financial burden and uh, anything from, you know, like those things, I feel like they're more cultural but I feel like if we're including these groups in this goal, we need to be thinking about, you know, sort of a, a way that we're measuring our progress in that. So I just think one of the metrics that can be built in based on our status with the TSI is that there's gonna be a climate survey that's sent out and that should be sent out yearly. So maybe when we're framing the questions for that TSI um, survey that gets sent out, we could have something that is reflective of the of what you're talking about, Kristen. So like, because that would be done every year. It's not gonna be a one hit wonder. I don't like it when you're joining the Board of Ed meeting with me. Yeah, yeah. That, that I think might be a good thing to just <laughs> no, that it, <laughs> to include these subgroups. Yeah, you and I both, let me tell you. Can you please mute, mute your microphones? Anyone in the audience? I was gonna say I support I support that I, that, that thought, and, and I, um, in my very brief uh, overview, um, I, I didn't cover everything, and so part of the presentation we did the other night uh, also focused on um, increasing the or strengthening and increasing the inclusive culture in the district. Uh, especially in regards to students with special needs. So um, it is part of our planning. Uh, and um, so I just want to say that. But I think the student <coughs> feedback uh, slash climate survey is a great idea. Yeah, and I apologize. I didn't read through the whole presentation. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was going really fast a little while ago and I missed some stuff. 
I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this is encompassed in any of the other, um, I forgot what the words are, but the titles, but um, is religion covered as well? Um, I know there's a lot of different kids of different backgrounds, Jewish, Catholic, Christian, Islam, Nation of Islam, um, say if they want to carry around their book, the Bible, the Torah, while the class is in session, is that going to be okay? Or is that written off? Because I know that has happened um, in the past that children have gotten in trouble for carrying that book around. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if that is, would be in the um, curriculum that the teachers will be learning because, you know, people, you know, church hurt is a real thing and it kind of creeps up when people start talking about their religion, Jesus, Allah. Um, is that going to be taught to the teachers as, as well um, to like kind of be able to allow the, the children to discuss if they decide they want to use a passage from the Bible, a passage um, from the Quran as a part of the project, is that gonna be okay? Or is it just gonna be like omitted? Cause you know, for whatever reason, sometimes that does come up. Um, would that be included in all of this? Uh, I I mean, I, I think so. I, I When you look at the, um, the culturally uh, responsive and sustaining framework, uh, you know, one of the areas of diversity is, is religion. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I think it's definitely a part of it. Um, I think teachers, uh, <laughs> teachers always have to walk a fine line with religion just in terms of what, you know, what they do themselves and how the conversation goes in a classroom um or a lesson or or whatever and they um it has to be focused on the educational side uh of it but but yeah no that is part of the diversity here um or in any community and uh and is a part of that framework Does anyone else have any comments or questions about the equity goal? So I'm going to move on to the fiscal goal. Um, the BCSD will employ a transparent budget process and build public support in order to maximize district programs and education offerings in the near and long term. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit later about our audit committee and, and some changes to our audit committee, which I think are actually important to the, the fiscal goal. Um, and I think we are headed into a really tough budget season. Um, so it's, I think this is, this is a goal that's sort of, I, you know, we've had, but I don't know that we've, we've really done a lot of work on. So maybe this is the, the year to um. a bit more robust. Sorry, uh, I think I think with fiscal, it's uh, it's not simple, <laughs> but it is straightforward that we need to uh, <laughs> increase levels of uh, you know stakeholder input um, in the budget process. Uh, we need to increase our own transparency, even though I feel like we have been in the past. Like we need to uh, increase that. Um, we need to start the process early. Uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I try not to be gloom and doom and <laughs> I, I am a realist uh, and you know, what the budget experts are saying at the sort of statewide school level is we're not really looking at a bad year. We're probably looking at four difficult years. Uh, four is the number they're, they're putting on in terms of like the length of how, what recovery will take in, in New York. Um, so, so I think in that process, uh, we will be faced with uh, harder choices than we've been faced, at least in my tenure here. And so trying to do things like gathering input 
uh, from our stakeholders and just trying to, you know, really communicate uh, our way through uh, the budget process and beyond. And then I think finally, I think the key is to move beyond. And this is something that I think we've started to do the last few years and we need to do this even more is we really need to, uh, you know, be really thinking about long term, you know, like what, um, what we're looking to impact with a budget three to four years down the road. And then, and then lastly, I think we just always need to challenge ourselves. And I know every, everybody Matt. agrees with this. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you enforce the forecast five and it's going to help us project a lot of things better. And we are working better with the numbers and we're working together. Great, great. Um, and uh, uh, and then lastly, it's just to focus our decision making on, uh, on you know, uh, on programming uh, for our students. And and then lastly, because uh, I just came off a committee meeting where we talked about professional development for like half the meeting, uh, but not having that be the thing that we started as our go-to. Um, is our go-to, you know, like the, the, the easy thing to cut. Uh, so finding ways to protect professional development, I think is important too. So, um, so anyway, um, those are just some quick thoughts about that. Anyone have any comments? Yeah, I think we have taken a few steps that were favorable toward better explanation of how the fiscal system works. Uh, you know, some more detailed slide shows that uh, Mrs. Corderoni puts up at the appropriate times. I think those are, are more helpful than we have had in the past. So those are steps forward. I'm concerned about the, just the, how do you achieve transparency when the news is really bad? <laughs> it's, uh, the state aid situation is, is serious. It may not have hit us very hard yet, but what uh, Matt just said was really uh, alarming and concerning that we could have a multi-year situation of, of uh, travail. So it's going to raise questions, especially as we get into negotiations with our various labor unions. So this is an important goal. It's probably going to be one of our most troublesome ones to meet. In the I think years. we should also look at our practice and policy and the sooner that we can have, um, you know, like any, any organization facing a tight budget, you have to really look at every single department, every single opportunity that you have um, to save and then look at what our priorities are and where we really don't want to cut and where we have space to um, to be uh, more more efficient and smarter and more responsible. I mean, I think that's really on us to in our oversight role to exercise that. Right. The um, it's not necessarily it doesn't it's not in the goal. And I was kind of thinking, uh, I'm kind of going I'm going to think out loud whether it should be in the goal, but um, partnering to bring down cost. Um, also, um, seeking alternative funding, um, as well as seeking um, like services to bring down cost as well. You were breaking up, at least for me, a little bit, Anthony. Did you say shared services? Yeah, I, I didn't call it that, but yeah. So, like partnering um, to keep to bring cost down. Um, so uh, alter alternative funding and um, in-kind services. In other words, like uh, instead of giving money, they give services, donate services um, that would bring cost down. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to be creative. So, I mean, I don't know how that would get incorporated to the goal per se, but it definitely should be something we should, we should uh, uh, if we, I guess, if we memorialize it, then we can, def, you know, we definitely can uh, have it as a focus to put into practice.
Um, I'm just reading it to see if there's like a couple of words that we could throw in there. I mean, it, we're, you know, the idea of maximizing district programs and education offerings is clear, but the, we are sort of depending on the budget for, for them in this, the way the goal is currently worded. We're gonna to need to partner with organizations and accept any, uh, um, you know, support and community support that we possibly can. That's going to be really important and really building those relationships and having uh, those be really strong and have good communication around them is going to be critical because that's going to be one avenue we have to, you know, I look at this as like we have, we know we're facing this really hard budget, um, but we also know that we have a huge portion of our community that's been you know, it was already vulnerable and now is going to be hit even harder. And so I think of this in terms of lost opportunities for kids if we don't do the best we can to bring as much as we can for all of them. Uh, and especially kids whose, you know, families aren't able to pay for outside support and services. So that's what I think, um, that, that's where my head is. So anything that we can do, that can't, that's not necessarily a part of the goal, but it is something that I think we should be talking about, you know, grant funding, partnering with foundations, um, developing really strong relationships in that way because this will be a community effort. So would it be more a key metric then? I don't think we can, you know, I just don't know if we can even, I, I actually, I think it falls more under communication. Um, I was thinking that too. That's where I think it, developing strong community partnerships. Um, because I, I don't think we can set a goal around a pretty significant unknown, and, but I do think that we can be, uh, do the best we can to be a very trusted partner. So the more that we do that, uh, the more successful I think we would be in, in harnessing those forces. I don't have a preference word, I guess. I think we're all talking the same thing. Um, I think we're all, I just uh, having it memorialized somewhere, I believe it would, would help us uh, focus on it. Well, I think that maybe we can make that part of the audit committee. I don't know, is that, does that make sense? Um, the, yeah, I mean, the audit committee is really, uh, I read our policy on it today and we, we need a charter for it, so there's, we're sort of wide open as to what's included in there. And I, I think that would be fine. We might want to consider broadening the scope to audit and finance. It's audit is just looking at how you're doing. Mm -hmm. Finance is looking at how you're going to do it. That makes sense. Okay. All right, so we're going to leave the fiscal goal as, as it's worded. I'm fine with that. I think it's about practice. Yeah. So I'm going to move on to communication. Uh, the BCSD will build trust in community through open communication, outreach, and dialogue with all stakeholders. Matt, do you want to talk first? Um, yeah, sure. We uh, um, we're focused this year on. Uh, <clears throat> flipping over the website into something new in the coming month or so, uh, having, uh, along with just sort of all of our other communications, having a, a regular newsletter. We're trying to use these uh, sort of Zoom town halls a lot more. Um, you know, communicating reopening was uh, an enormous challenge. Uh, I think... <clears throat> Not that I'm going to spend all night comparing ourselves to other districts, but when I do compare ourselves to other districts with reopening, I think, uh, although, you know, we certainly had flaws with what we did, I think we really uh, tried to engage with the community through, you know, Zooms and other means uh, uh, to get into all the nitty gritty around reopening. Um, 
both sort of internally with our employees and also, you know, with, with the whole community. So our goal is uh, kind of some of it's just really tangible, like, uh, you know, new website, uh, more sort of professional district newsletter that will ce celebrate uh, a lot of the amazing things we're doing. And, uh, and then also just uh, trying to continue to move forward with, uh, you know, right now, Zoom type town halls and other things like that to engage with folks around different things. Uh, I think one thing to, for the goal, um, the PCSG will build trust and community through open, I'd like to have the word responsive communication and out, communication outreach and dialogue with all stakeholders. How does everybody else feel about that? To add or to replace open? Open, responsive communication and outreach, uh, outreach, open, responsive communication, outreach, and dialogue with all stakeholders. I like it. I think um, in one of the um, NISPA sessions, something that really resonated was uh, the speaker said that the district should be the first and best resource of information about what's happening in the district. Um, and I think responsiveness is, is part of that and it is part of building trust. I like it. I like it as well. I think it's important. Just a technical question. Is there a comma after open or I mean after responsive? Yes. I think it should be after open. Open responsive. So yeah, open yeah. comma responsive communication comma. Comma outreach and dialogue with all stakeholders. Is everyone okay with that? I'm fine. Yes. Okay, great. What, um, and uh, you know, the pandemic kind of, uh, is, um, the, uh, I guess. Yeah. The Do you want to go off camera and see if it makes your internet a little bit better? Because you're breaking up a little bit, so. Sure, okay. Is that better? Keep talking. Okay, so um, um, are we doing anything about um, in terms of metrics? Uh, I know with the COVID, with the COVID pandemic, um, we're not really we're doing Zoom, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of more worried about the non-technologically enhanced communication that still needs to be done. What kind of communication do you mean, Anthony? Like things sent home or? Um, well, I mean, if things sent home is the best way to do it, I know as the, as, as the kids get older, sometimes not all those things get home, uh, end up at home, but um, um, how can we um, make sure they do go home, I guess, or something. Um, but there are some, uh, I mean, I, I, I know there's, not everybody has the technology um, to be frequently on email or social media or to have Zoom meetings, um, and but, but they're still stakeholders, so. I mean, with yeah, within, you know, the guidelines of a pandemic, we, we become pretty limited. I'm not totally sure. What you, um, do you, can you give an example? Sorry, the cats were fighting. Um, I was wondering if those of your cats are if I had to mute someone else. I was wondering who's <laughs> cat. I could not figure that out. <laughs> um, yeah, they usually don't fight when, when I'm on those. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, well, I, make, I don't know. I mean, tele telephone? Hmm. Conference so you mean like sort of just of Zoom calls? connecting with people to, to make sure people are okay? Is that what you mean? You get robocalls, I can tell you that. 
as a robocall recipient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've 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 heard I've gotten I've gotten mixed feedback on robocalls. Some people forget either get dropped off by accident or something. I you know I was talking to a parent um, who I've known since I moved here for fourteen years the other day, and um, I've never seen her cry before. And she said that when she sees the number on her phone, she always listens because Matt's voice is so comforting to her. And she started crying. <laughs> so. The Jones of Matt Landau. <laughs> you know, the pandemic. Voice of calm. Oh boy. Um, Anthony, do you have a good Anthony, example Anthony. in that feedback that you said that like, that, you know, I, I understand that like, you're saying that it's not the best for everyone, but has anyone said that doesn't work for me, but I would really appreciate this, you know, as an option. And it's something that we can do. Yeah. So, so I, the complaint I had gotten um, once was, um, uh, well, actually twice, maybe uh, that was, um, and I was like, well, did you get the robocall? Like what robocall? I mean, I used to get them, but I don't get them. And they, they, it didn't, it wasn't sent out to robocall. I said, was sent out the rubble. So we had all this discussion about that, but you know, I don't know what this, how the system checks to make sure everyone has a working number or not. Um, I don't know if, if um, it was, I mean, the one in the one of the two examples, it was, it was actually just one family. So all you needed to do is make sure one of them got the message, not, you know, um, wasn't like a, a, a separated parent situation. Sorry. Right. Um, this issue just, uh, it's one of those things that it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's the, the person whose number changes or something changes. It's, it's, they have to take some steps to, um, you know, to enter it in and let us know. Uh, and uh, for instance, there's no judgment with people who don't do that. Cause I, <clears throat> uh, even if people think my robocalls are, soothing i don't get my own robocalls <laughs> so so i haven't updated or i've forgotten to do something and so i don't get my own things i get the email but for some reason i don't get the robocall so i always uh if i'm doing it from home listen to see if my wife's phone is going off but uh anthony we try to do a lot of different things um it's sort of a blanket approach and it kind of i think captures most people in one way or another um but uh you know we keep trying um, and thank you for keep to keep thank you for keeping trying um i think i mean if there's a way to solve that issue um and you know or and similar issues to make sure all stakeholders are have some contact with the district i think that's how we fulfill this goal I don't know if maybe the system we're using not the best system. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be speaking on out of terms on that because I'm not playing with your system, but I mean, um, it, it doesn't does reflect bad on us if, if, if all our stakeholders don't have some communication or have uh, missed communication from us, I should say. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, try to keep this moving just because we still have two goals and our committees to talk about. So is everyone comfortable with that? I don't want to push anyone through. It's something um, they want. I just wanted to ask like one question real quick. Yeah. Like referring to communication right now, like I've spoken to a lot of parents and um, they like the fact that they're communicating with teachers way more often than they would have been if, you know, like it wasn't like virtual learning or hybrid, I think is what you guys call it. And I just want to know, would that be continuing? Obviously it'd be long-term because nobody knows when this is all going to be over, but um, would that be continuing? Cause they're starting to feel that, you know, that trust and that communication is be making them feel like, you know, like comfortable with the fact that they're learning and new information almost weekly instead of like uh, meet the teacher night or quarterly, you know, like they're like up, be up to beat with their kids right that is that's a great question um yeah i mean i i think i think there's a lot of things i don't have a list uh but if we sat down and made a list like i mean there's been a lot of things that have been really difficult and uh, about this but then there's been some things uh <clears throat> that uh 
that have been improvements. So things we can do to the th things we can keep that were improvements. Like uh, I, I want to try to keep them. I, I think, I think teach from the teacher standpoint, um, when parents are more informed about what's going on, it actually makes their job easier. Uh, it's sort of like if you're more proactive, you know, than the other side, um, the other part of it gets easier. So I would, I would love to keep that going. I mean, you know, what, I mean, I still want, when we're able to do face-to-face -face meetings, I obviously want to get back to having face-to-face -face meetings, but, um, you know, just on my side of things, when I do one of those Zoom town halls, I think the smallest number of people I ever had on one was like a hundred and the highest was, I don't know, three or 400. And if I had that many people at an actual in-person meeting, you know, I'd be shocked. And so like that, that is, that's an example, like, you know, you're reaching more people um, through some of these tools too, even from my end as well. So no, I would love to keep uh, some of these things going um, that makes sense. And as, as we're down the road, we all get to sort of, you know, be back together physically. Um, but that, that's a great question. Um, it's funny as a parent, uh, as a parent in the district, I, um, approaching sort of the, when the teacher sent out the stuff that she was sharing when our kids teacher sent out the stuff, um, it, it felt like I already knew all of it. And that was probably the first time where I felt like I, I already sort of knew it all because it was all really laid out, like all, you know, the first few weeks of the year instead of waiting uh, for the meeting. So that's a great point. I think also just to echo that point, I can say that the difference in the parent, like for, as a parent, like you, I went from having uh, kids in school where I wasn't working full time or I was working freelance so I had a lot more flexibility and I felt like all of those casual conversations that happen at pickup and all those things that you know where you can you have time to volunteer and do that stuff like you're way more plugged into the rhythms of the school and then when you're not a part of that you're really you feel outside of it I could say like that I, I felt that shift for myself and this year um I mean, it's not perfect because I just found out my son's been marking things turned in because you can just click turned in, but he hasn't been doing them. <laughs> but I was able to like hop on a meet with the teacher and we could all talk together. And that is, um, that level of connection really makes a huge difference and it. And it helps you catch things before, um, before it's kind of too long, too far gone. And you just feel a little bit more in sync with the classroom. So I think that that's something that we should really, yeah, we should take a look at what's worked for people during this time. Because I can say it's made, even though this has been harder overall, that's made a big difference. Is there is there enough support for, um, no, I, I remember, I don't, I haven't gotten, on a portal complaint in a, in a long time, but they used to be where some teachers are using portal, some of them not. I think we're all using portal at this point. I think it may be a, maybe a parent issue where the parents needed to be educated how to use portal, and I think there were some learning sessions and stuff on that. So I, I think we may have resolved that, but I'm, I don't know for sure. Anthony, we're all using all the things now. We've got Dojo, Google Classroom, the Parent Portal, like okay. all the things. So many apps. Yeah, remind. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the culture of care goal if everyone's comfortable with that. Um, oh, sorry, you were gonna, were you gonna read it? <laughs> sorry. I was gonna read it just for those who don't have it in front of them. Um, yeah. The BCSD will foster a culture of care dedicated to maintaining a safe and supportive emotional environment that ensures the wellness of all members of the school community. Take it away, Matt. Uh, well, you know, like I said before, I, I really feel this one is intertwined with the uh, with the equity goal quite a bit. So I already spoke about some of these things. We want to continue uh, building out the responsive classroom piece, which is a classroom community building model for elementary teachers. I uh, keep uh, pushing out the restorative practice slash talking circle piece <coughs> uh, at the secondary level. Um, keep uh, working on getting uh, teachers and administrators trained in the dignity framework. 
um, on some level or another. Um, so our, our revised code of conduct. Um, and then, you know, we had a number of people trained this year uh, before the year started uh, on um, sort of trauma-based instruction and trauma-based supervision if they were administrators. And so <clears throat> I think that's going to be an ongoing piece of this is just, uh, you know, kind of the, not kind of the, uh, the trauma behind uh, that a lot of kids or families have experienced uh, through, through all of the events of the past year and in the next year. And so not only sort of focusing on that this year, but, you know, a lot of this work is really also focusing on uh, when we're all back, you know, together, whenever that is um, and being, and being prepared for that. So, so anyway, a lot of this is ongoing. It's very intertwined with the equity goal. And uh, I think we've done some nice work in this area. I agree. Um, this is, I think, most people's favorite goal because it just <laughs> like it really gets to the heart of the humanity of all of us. Um, and I think that there's a ton of crossover between the equity goal and the culture of care goal and, and um, all of the goals are really hard to meet without this goal being super robust and active in everyone's mind. Yeah, and I think that survey, that student, that school climate survey um, is gonna be critical to, to understanding that. And if, I don't know, I know that circles are, um, circles are private, but I know that there can be, you can do a circle around kind of more, like in a more neutral way. I know you were talking about having observ observers, Matt, this summer of some of the, um, the circles that you were doing with, um, with students and pulling key themes out of that too would be helpful in developing the student climate survey, I think. Okay. Yeah, we, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, especially uh, Eric and I uh, did, did a lot of uh, sort of student focus groups or student circles uh, the last couple of years. Um, Eric did, Eric did several with uh, developing the revisions to the code of conduct. And then uh, the last few years, uh, I got sort of interrupted by the pandemic last year, but uh, the last few years I did a number of uh, just sort of student focus groups, just about, uh, you know, sort of everything educational and getting student input into the budget uh, process. And that was, you know, from elementary on up, I would start with, uh, fourth graders um, and go through 12th grade. So yeah, the, the more we do that, the, the better. I, I love doing that. And uh, um, we get a lot, of, a lot of great ideas from those. Is this another one that uh, partnership would be needed? Or I know we've, it's not exactly a partnership. We've, we've brought in organizations, I guess, on, on fee, but partnership with well i know we did like i don't know if glisten was a was a was a was brought in as a as a partner was brought in as a contractor i know the the, the uh, center for uh, mediation i guess they're they're being brought in as a contractor right or yeah i mean you know i i don't know what the right word is but we do have contracts with them glisten was small i mean glisten is is of you know extreme non-for-profit sort of thing so so their, you know, their contract for the work was pretty, pretty simple. Uh, we have contract with Dutchess Mediation to help us with the resort access work uh, and the circle work. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call it partnership, um, but I think Dutchess Mediation, we've done a lot of really deep work with them for sure. So we rely on them for a lot.
I'm fine with the goal as it is because the work is ongoing. And I think that that's the only metrics we have. So students have uh, discipline data. Um, I don't know if there's another way to name feedback other than if there's avenues for feedback outside of that we can capture outside of just the surveys, but I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I feel like, like you said, it's so interconnected that this is the kind of thing that is reflected in all of the metrics in a way. I agree. Okay, if everyone's okay with it, I'm gonna move on to sustainability. Uh, the BCSD will use best practices to create a healthy school climate improve educational programming and conserve limited financial and physical resources. The me it's kind of, I mean, the goal is fine. I, I think we might need to, we might need to revisit this after we have a presentation from uh, Jamie Cloud, perhaps, um, just because I, we're, we're not, we might be doing this, but we have no way of knowing it. There's no committee anymore and it doesn't get reported to facilities. So I don't know what the, we don't really have, the, we don't have the data and we are just starting the curriculum implementation. So if maybe the admin, you know, if Matt, you want a team to figure out how we would get that data or if it should be put through facilities or if we even, you know, I don't know. I know we've started mapping energy usage and we should have that, um, but I don't know that we're, we're, I don't know that we're doing best practices because we've never really, implemented, we never finished implementing the, um, any of the frameworks we were working within and everything got interrupted after the pandemic, but just, um, I mean, I think it's fine to still have this goal, but maybe we revisit it after Jamie presents. Um, yeah, it does. I mean, I feel like we don't, we, we don't know exactly what the sustainability center, um, is going to offer us. So, I think that's exciting. Um, curious to hear more about it when we can. Um, yeah, no, we uh, we're going to be one of the members of it, and uh, I think uh, the board getting a deeper understanding of what the curriculum work would look like would be good. And and then I think the other thing with this is we have a. Um, capital project that we're planning <laughs> uh, and uh, are they gonna, going to start to plan, I should say. We haven't really started. And to infuse um, sustainability practices throughout that project um, will be our goal as well. So um, I, think it's, I think it's really good and powerful for the board to have this goal and, uh, and you know, the, the work um, certainly was interrupted just by, uh, by, I, I don't even know what to say by, uh, uh, me or us dropping the ball, but it didn't, it wasn't the pandemic. Um, but the pandemic certainly sort of extended the disruption, but, um, we're very eager to get going on it again. I think that it's the, I, I, I think one of the things that, you know, uh, Jamie Cloud had said, we, what we were going to do before the pandemic was she was gonna come and do a day in the district. And that was gonna be part of developing buy-in and getting excitement around this. I think that's the piece that we were never able to really achieve. And then that did get disrupted. Um, so I think that I don't wanna, I'm not comfortable with leaving it at you dropping the ball. <laughs> like That's not, the point here, I just think that that I don't know about this. This goal might have been a bit of uh, the cart before the horse, and so now I think that the the horse will probably be the curriculum, um, and then we can piece off into our other um, committee work the best practices and the um, and the you know conserving our limited financial resources as a part of our way of looking at our fiscal planning going forward.
So obviously workshop coming there. But in general, is everyone okay with the wording? I also agree with the approach. Okay, so the only um, change in the goals that I have down is the adding responsive to the communication goal. Is there anything I missed there? Um, so I'll have these prepped for us to approve at the next regular board meeting. It doesn't, I don't think we, we're scheduled to have a regular board meeting again on Monday, but um, as of now, we don't need to because we have a small consent agenda here. So. That may not happen, so it may not be till the December meeting. So uh, moving on to talk about the committees a little bit, I wanted to talk in general what the expectations were for committees in terms of um, having a schedule for the year, putting out an agenda, and then go through the um, committees and just briefly talk about each one and what the if the you know that committee had created a goal or any specific goals for itself for this year. So. Um, in terms of general protocols, we some committees in the past have had regular meetings scheduled throughout the year. I think that would be great for all of the committees. And I think, except for the audit committee, which we're gonna talk about, I think all of the committees have created a schedule. Um, and in terms of putting out an agenda, you know, we, we need to be respectful of each other's time. And so I think that putting out an agenda, you know, at least 24 hours beforehand is really helpful for, for each committee. Do all the committee chairs feel that they can do that? Yes. Yes, yes. Great. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I'm sort of probably similar to policy needing to be dependent on admins. Matt and I always need to kind of put our heads together, but yes. Yeah, I mean, and obviously within reason, we're all human, we all are volunteers here, but um, as best as we can. So I have the audit committee first. Um, as I said, I, um, well, currently what happens with the audit committee is it meets once a year after the um, external audit has happened and um, looks at the findings. Um, there's been a couple of things that have made me think, I mean, Kristen, you made the suggestion, I think, first about thinking about the audit committee in a different way. And then um, one of the NISBA um, webinars that I attended talked about that, talked about that it can actually be a, a you know, a more powerful force in board work. Um, and then I read our audit committee policy today, and um, it talked about the fact that it um, we're supposed to have a charter, which we don't. So um, that seemed like a great opportunity to talk about what, how we want the committee to work. And I, um, I was in touch with our legal department a little bit about this and, and they, um, we haven't, you know, they haven't given any strict advice, but in general, what I've, you know, from looking around, it looks like, you know, meeting four times a year is, is a good way to go. Um, and I think we should meet sooner than later to talk about our charter and kind of go from there. I don't know if, if we need to get into the weeds about it here, but um, I'm wondering does it, and yeah, we, and we, we don't have a chair of the audit committee because it's only met once a year. So we would choose a chair at that point. Does that sound okay to everyone? I think four times a year is a good start. Uh, there's no reason why we couldn't add meetings if we saw a need to. Yeah, definitely. If something comes up, you know, it will just be a more robust committee that's ready to um, ready to talk about whatever needs talking about and report back to the board. So, okay. So I'll send an email around um, to our audit committee members. What, is that Anthony, Craig, and Kristen? Is that right? Um, yeah. And are we going to, or, when we meet, is that when we would discuss putting community members on? Yeah. That's that when we would basically write the charter, which would include that and um, yeah, what we would be, you know, if there was something, a different subject we talk about at each meeting or if we're, we're more responding to what's going on in the district, things like that. I have um, a template from the Office of the State Comptroller for, um, Comptroller for District Auto Audit Committee, so I'll send it around. Okay, super, thank you. I had a, I had a question. Um, 
under um, so on the general protocols. I'm sorry, going backwards. Um, the um, I, actually, I find um, you know we give summaries at the board comments, but I find written summaries to be useful um, and something also that probably could be captured better uh, submit submitting them for the minutes. Um, is that possible? We can include that as in the general protocols. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I wonder. I actually, at some point, looking at um, different districts' websites, I saw that one district was posting minutes to all of their committee meetings. And um, you know, we've talked a lot about like how do we sort of communicate more with the public about what's going on. I mean, those meetings are open to the public, but um, you know, not everyone can attend, obviously and scrolling through a board meeting to find those committee reports is not easy. So I wonder if we could have a section on the website that had, you know, our committees a little bit, you know, each, each committee could have a little bit more information about it. it could It could even have the goal of the committee for that year if, it, if that was good and then um, maybe minutes for every meeting. I think that that's a sort of a tentative plan right now for the site. Um, and I think also something um, that would be great because Anthony, I really agree with your point is if, you know, if there's somebody on each committee who's actually responsible for making sure that those minutes or that summary is done within a certain time period and is available to be posted. And um, the, the uh, thought that I'd had was that it gets integrated into the news feed that's on the homepage of the new website. So if there was a meeting, a committee meeting that happened that week, the the um, the the minutes are sort of show up in the in the current feed, and then they are archived on that committee's page. But they're getting circulation in the in the main real estate of the website. Um, and I think it would be great if that process was just sort of policy for each committee, and somebody was responsible for it for each committee, and it was it was to be expected. Um, and then it could be regularly. You know, promoted because it's it's existing there on the homepage at a point. That's my that, thought about it. And if and you know, each committee can decide. I mean, um, Kelly does attend some of the committee meetings to take minutes, but um, not all of them. And I think the committees can decide whether or not they feel that they need someone there to take minutes. I, I don't think it's necessary for every committee, but it's obviously an option. Yeah, like for um, for you know, wellness, we don't do minutes per se, but we have, we have a summary and I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable like being responsible for the summary and, and posting it within a certain time period. And I, I do feel like that would be useful because like you said, not everybody can make it to every meeting. Um, and the information that's in those, in those discussions is often really important and can get missed mm -hmm. otherwise. I think even from, yeah, I agree. And I think it's so important to have those summaries just from a governance standpoint, because you just forget from one meeting to the next, like what are the loose threads that you wanted to follow up on and that you need to get information to move these, to advance any objectives. So I, I think it's an important management tool as well. I totally agree. The summaries get used to help develop the agenda for the following meeting, yeah. Are we able to record committee meetings? Is that allowed? I think so. Yeah. We certainly can if they're on Zoom. While well, they're on Zoom, I um, I think if we go back to in-person meetings, we'll talk. We should talk about the cost of it because then we have tech people there. And um, you mean, do you mean just audio record and put the sound file, or or do you mean like have a a video recording? No, I mean audio just for the purpose of you know, for the, you know, a committee chair like me to be able to listen back afterwards and take really copious notes. It's hard to you tell people you're recording, you can, that's the legal requirement. Right. It's, it's hard to record minutes accurately um, when you're also running the meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it doesn't need to be the chair's responsibility to, to take the minutes either. So um, I think that is a lot to ask actually of the chair. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not the chair that does that. I mean, if, you, you know, if you're comfortable with doing it, that's fine, but I can see how that would be a lot. Yep, okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, I, I think that um, a summary um, is, the, I guess, is the minimum uh, minutes. Um, be more, more work intensive, but summary would be the minimum. And maybe we can, we don't have um, a lot about the committees in our new school board member handbook, but maybe we can add this stuff to our, um, I'll, I'll do that to our handbook. So, um, great. Do you wanna, should we move on to the facilities committee? What about it? Do you want to just talk? There's not much to say. You're working on a capital project. Um, right. you know, you want me to just report? Are we I, if, there's, if there's a goal for the year, which you're, the facilities committee goal is, is pretty self-explanatory. So, I mean, I but I do think that there should be, let's see, I mean, the capital project for sure. Um, and you haven't even met as a committee yet so you know maybe this is something yeah. we can't talk about yet because you haven't i talked. don't feel like we can yeah we haven't really discussed what our goals are I, I mean i don't feel fair i don't feel like it's fair to <laughs> spring it on everybody now i have some thoughts but um yeah i think that we are our, our primary goal will be in this very challenging environment figuring out our capital project and um and the communication plan around that um how we gather input and reach out to the community um, during a pandemic because a large portion of this development will probably be happening while um, while we're all not together still. So um, I think we just need to find a way to get together feedback. So probably the two goals are plan uh, uh, communication, uh, gathering input and plan development. And we, our primary thing that's moving forward right now should be the buildings and condition survey, which will inform how much we have left over to actually do some more fun stuff with. Meredith, just for a point of order, I, I don't know if the committees all talked about their goals and so forth. So the chairs are gonna be reaching out and describing something of what they feel personally, and it may not be the whole committee reflection. That is a, that's a good point, Anthony. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we did talk about it a little bit in the policy committee, didn't we? Or do you feel that that was not made clear enough? We I guess we talked about it with Bill. Alyssa yeah, we I talked with Bill. Like we that. talked about replacing the policy manual, getting that up to date and- But that was a conversation that two people of the committee had with an administrator. It was right, no, I understand that. I was, I was thinking out loud there. I was thinking that we had had it as a committee because I've had it several times with Bill. So I apologize for that. So, I mean, so it's like the committee work's not working. It's certain people of the committee are working. Right. No, you're, I point taken. So we can't necessarily talk about it um, for all of the committees as just as we decided with Kristen for the facilities. I mean, I think that um, Flora can talk about if there is a particular theme this year for Dutchess County School Board Association. There's not really, it can't really be discussed for each committee. So it's fine to pass. Do you want me to, did you want me to talk about that or? Um, well, Kristen, did you, were you done? Sorry, I think we interrupted. Yeah, no, I'm done. I mean, I don't feel like, um, well, now, now I'm scared of Anthony, but I. <laughs> <laughs> Be very I don't want to overstep, but I was just pointing out that uh, the I know, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. And I, 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 I we I, haven't I, even I, met. Facilities hasn't even met, so I don't yeah. have. I can't. I can't speak to a goal, but it's it's not like a secret. I think everybody does know that we have this capital project plan, and we have buildings we need to fix. So that's our. Those are our goals, and then I guess our our basic goal would be to actually meet. That's where we are. Yeah, and and when I asked for goals, I I meant if a goal had been set. So I apologize for that. Um, so obviously policy, we have not, uh, we have not talked about the goal there. So I, I, Alyssa, did you have anything you wanted to say about the policy committee as the chair? Um, well, I'd, hopefully we can meet monthly, right? That's the, that's the, oh, that's always the goal. Um, and catch up on some of these policies that we need to review and get that that policy manual replaced. But as far as goals, um, I think we'll give an update at the next regular meeting. 
after we'll, will we have hopefully we'll have had a meeting before then yeah um actually i should mention that we are the because we may have to can't uh, move the policy and the pr committee meeting from the seventh if our retreat works out um we were talking about having the pr committee meeting on the 30th would that work for um, members of the um, policy committee Yeah, unfortunately, the, the conflict I have on the 7th will be the same conflict I have on the 30th. Yeah. I, so um, I have another deployment assignment coming from the 23rd to the 14th. Okay. So we may have to meet without you then. It sounds like you're, you may be. Yeah. Okay. I, I have no conflict on the 30th. Anthony White. The 30th? Yeah. I don't know what I put in my doodle poll. The well, that would be for the policy meeting, not for the retreat. So December seventh, I thought it was. The retreat we're hoping still is December seventh, but that's only if Anthony is available. Are really asking me about the thirtieth? For the policy meeting. Oh, policy! Yeah, I'll make it work. Okay. All right. So, we'll, why don't we do that as a tentative? I'll we'll figure that out by the end of the week. Um, do you have anything else, Alyssa? No, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Okay. So Flora, um, yeah, I don't think the PR committee has set any particular goals. So whatever you're comfortable saying. Well, yeah, but we did, I mean, we've, I think a few sort of uh, ideas emerged that, that we want to focus on. Uh, obviously there's a lot of um, advocacy to be done this year, um, just with everything that's going on uh, legislatively with budgets. Um, and so we talked a little bit about that and we are moving, um, you know, toward this idea of making, um, advocacy a more robust, uh, you know, part of the work that we do and, and bringing the community into it more if possible. Um, and we talked, uh, obviously about the website. That's a big part of, um, of public relations for us this year. Um, so that's, I guess, you know, a goal of sorts is, is moving that ahead. Um, right. Am I, am I missing something? That sounds great to me. Yeah. Um, so we have goals sort of, we have, <laughs> I mean, the website is a goal that, that is there, whether, you know, whether we choose it or not. So, um, and sort of same with the legislative stuff that's happening. So we're, we're just working toward that. Um, for wellness, it, should I go ahead and talk about the other committees? Yeah. Okay. So for wellness, we did establish um, some goals. Uh, we need to reassess the wellness policy uh, that was postponed from last year, obviously, because of COVID. Um, we uh, talked about ensuring an equity of resources and services across <clears throat> and the learning cohorts um, by building, uh, bringing building representatives together to share ideas and initiatives. And this is really just making sure that just through the simple act of communicating what's being done at the building level, um, you know, leadership knows what's out there, what's working for others and what's not. Um, building more school partnerships uh, with local service providers and community organizations. And um, this is something that uh, Jasmine's been helping us uh, get ready for this coming meeting that's happening on uh, Wednesday um, and creating a directory of community resources for students, staff, and families. Uh, this is sort of feeds into the website. Um, there are these pages, uh, these uh, student and, and staff and, and family resource pages, and I think they're really underutilized. And I've always looked uh, when we talk about wellness and wellness resources and we would get a link or we would get information and it's like where can it live and having it live on the wellness page it was sort of buried um but the you know the resources for staff students and families those are very like they're on the main navigation and so i think we want to really start populating that and making it a, a destination uh for the community um so that those are our four goals and we are doing breakout sessions on Wednesday at 3.30 uh, to, to sort of talk about how we can facilitate those goals this year. It's a challenging year, but we'll see what we can do. Um, and then the Dutchess County School Board Association, 
Uh, yeah, it's a lot of what's come up has been this year has been around the theme of COVID. So the first um, session was basically just different districts talking about how they've managed reopening during COVID. Um, there was there was a session on ACEs, but the next meeting is talking specifically about um, special education in the time of COVID. Um, and they they said they are actually taking suggestions for um, for meeting themes this year. Um, if anybody has something that, that they would like to suggest, but I do think you know COVID is probably going to emerge as a really big theme um, in the region and everywhere anyway. So that's I big. think. Cuts will probably take over in January. Right, over. right. Yeah. So that's it for me. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Matt, I don't know if you want to talk about the district safety committee at all. I mean, just is it meeting regularly or how is that working? Um, it, it yeah, it, it meets monthly. Uh, we miss some months during the pandemic and, uh, you know, we just review uh, safety procedures and look at new mandates from the state, things like that. Thank you. Um, Anthony White, do you want to report on curriculum? The curriculum committee did not set forth any goals, nor did we frame any conversation about goals. However, I have reported out on the curriculum work committee during the board of education committee report section as to what the committee has been working on. Um, and one of the things you talked about that sounded really interesting was curriculum ma mapping. Would you feel comfortable reviewing that for a second? Um, I don't want to misspeak about how that will be happening for the district. So I will bring it up at the next committee meeting to say how it will be mapped. And so I could give a specific direction as to what the committee is thinking about the mapping. Thank you. And we talked about the diversity committee um, work kind of through the goals. I, I feel like we covered a lot there. And we will be having a presentation on that soon. Um, so is everyone okay with that moving out off of the committee? So the last thing on this, on the workshop agenda is um, just, you know, wanted to allow people to spitball some ideas for um, meetings with the city of Beacon. They had reached out to us. We've sort of been tra talking about having regular meetings um, for a long time and, you know, everything has been pretty nutty, but, I still think it would be great, especially um, with the budget crunches that we're facing. Um, and so I was, I, we still, I think, you know, we, what we would do is pick a committee to, um, to try to meet, although Lee was asking for a meeting with um, just Matt and I and the city administrator, um, which will now probably be postponed because the city administrator is leaving. So, um, but we'll try to keep moving this forward. Um, in terms of subjects to talk about, topics to talk about, I had um, shared services after school programming and development. Um, oh, and I, I forgot to put um, broadband access on here because that's something else we've talked about. Are there any other topics that people feel should be on, on that list? Yeah, I think uh, assessment practices have caused some controversies for a number of people around town. Anything else? Um, bulk purchasing, um, there's an opportunity for if we need something and they need something um, to uh, increase our, our buying power. Um, I know uh, they use BidNet. Um, I did uh, BidNetDirect.com. Um, I circulated uh, a link to that of stuff they've done in the past for bidding. Um, so maybe there's, uh, you know, it's not the same as shared services. Shared services, I, my definition is that your one organization has a service and both can benefit, um, so you share it. But um, bulk person, I guess, is different to me. Um, uh, composting um, that has come up in city conversation and um, 
they just uh, and I and I think it's also come up in school conversation, but I don't know if both talking together. Um, I have a feeling that it hasn't. Um, so um, I know this uh, from what I understand, Karen Pagano is interested in composting, um, and the city's interested in composting. So I'll try to bring that up, and then training. I you know there may be some training that both the city and the school district can both benefit from. Um, that would may reduce some training cost on our end as well. Okay, I've got all that done. Yeah, I have uh, another one. Uh, there was uh, one way that the school district properties and the city interfaces where our driveways and parking lots abut the streets. We have to get onto the streets at some point. Um, there's also some crosswalk concern. For example, I have raised this issue personally with the city uh, with no uh, firm responses yet for a marked crosswalk on uh, Asylum Road or Matawan Road, whichever you want to call it by, uh, where we have a Meadow Ridge right across from Beacon High School. And people do cross there. There's no marking. I think there's some safety issues to be talked about. Good point. OK, anything else? Can it be something where if we think of something after the fact, we just email the whole board to copy it everyone in? Absolutely, or bring it up in your board comments. I mean, I, I'm going to follow up with an email to Lee, but I, like I said, I seriously doubt this will happen before the end of the year. So we'll just keep trying. I also just want to leave it open that I know we have new board members and this is a lot to take in so that they should feel free to follow up with any communication or any ideas that come to them after the meeting. Yeah, if you're like me, all your good ideas will come after the meeting. Is, is there um is there a use to discuss, I guess, some some something more specific? I mean, shared services, like for example, they have a grant writer. Um, I mean, is that would that would that help us as well? Or actually, they pay a grant writer, but it, the way that they the that writer is paid is if they win grant. And it's um I don't know that it's been tremendously effective because we did explore it around sustainability, so. Uh, Meredith, that's definitely something worth talking about. Um, but I think that when we talked about this previously, it was that um, I think the best example I could give is uh, when we were interviewing uh, architecture firms for the facilities um, committee, one of the things that came up was that you really have to look at uh, where your best resources are, where there's willing partners, where there's leadership. So, you know, like the one of the facility, one of the architecture firms showed this beautiful um, maker space that they had built at this school. And then they, well, later when we were talking about developing the plan, they were like, yeah, we always show that in our brochure, but actually the teacher who works in that maker space had uh, a shop class and he didn't want to lose the shop class and he hates the maker space. And so they don't use any of the stuff that's in there. So uh, that's one of the things with um, grant writing is it, it is really weighing whether it makes sense to have somebody on staff or whether to develop kind of teams who take initiative to pursue grants around goals and staff it with people who are the most enthusiastic and know this, know the, um, know the district really well because they're more likely to get not only the, on the front end, they invest the time and the energy, but on the back end, have the buy-in to execute on the grant. Um, Cause I, I do know that the city, I, I know Jeff's brought the city several grant opportunities um, that the grant writer didn't find. And that's not a knock on the grant writer. It's just that he had some awareness of some capacity that the grant writer who's not part of the community or the city didn't have. Gotcha. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll um, compile this list and we can keep growing it um, until we finally get face to face.
Does anybody else have anything else be, uh, before I conclude the workshop? I appreciate everyone's focus and patience. So I'm gonna move on to the consent agenda. Uh, the use of the consent agenda permits the Board of Education to make more effective use of its time by adopting a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Any member of the board who wishes to discuss individually a particular piece of business on the consent agenda may so indicate, and that item will be considered and voted on separately, thus preserving the right of all board members to be heard on any issue. Are there any, sorry? I'm sorry, I'm out of order, but I'm sorry. Is there anything that anyone would like to pull from the consent agenda? Can I have a motion to approve items 4.01 through 4.05? So moved. Yeah, Second. Tim. Alyssa, are there any comments or questions? Yeah, 404, I, I got my uh, phone interview today. Um, so um, it sounds very promising. I'm very optimistic. That's great. Yeah, I had mine today as well. And um, I feel really, really positive about them. I'm excited to do this. I mentioned something I today, but I didn't send on the doodle poll. So. It's next week, so if, we, if you schedule it, remember to hit send after you pick a time. Um, there was also mention about a Thursday uh, thing that they do, some sort of circle thing. They do two Thursdays a week. Um, they, yeah, they do, a, it's a free circle that is, um, partic it's about racism right now. I don't know if the theme changes over time, but right now it is. There's one this coming Thursday, I don't, do you, do you have that information or you want me to send it to you? I do, I do not. That's why I brought it up. I was kind of hoping uh, to get more information on it. I'll forward it to the whole board. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Anthony, is there a second? Second. Laura, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned at 9.09. Thanks so much. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody.